So do you ever run into your brushes turning rock hard? You use them, you wash them, but they still come out rock hard. This happens to the best of us. Sometimes no matter how much we clean them and how much we care for them, sometimes they can turn rock hard. So today I want to share with you what I do when I have rock hard brushes and how you can get them to a point where they're completely pliable again and you can use them again on projects. And if you stay to the end of this video, I will show you how to choose a brush and how to clean a brush in a way that you'll have less issues with this long term. If we haven't met yet, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hoblong Studio. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to start with is some dish soap. So I have some Kachina dish soap in a container here. Any sort of dish soap will work. Whatever ones that you use for washing any dishes, you can also use for cleaning your brushes. And this is a way I like just to pre-prep these um, for cleaning. And so I just take a little bit of dish soap, I add it to my brush. So I basically just try to get as much into the bristles as possible. Uh, this is almost a way of just pre-prepping your brushes for washing kind of helps them get a little bit looser, a little bit quicker. Depending on how solid your brush is, you might have to do this two or three times to get them soft and loose again. Uh, some of them don't ever come loose, but I have found that I've managed to save about 90% of my brushes using this type of technique. Sometimes they are completely hard. Sometimes they can just bend a little bit the tips, but the rest of it's hard. That's not gonna work really well when you're working on your paintings. So by just adding in a little bit of soap, that's just a really great way of just softening them up and getting them ready to be washed. And while you're working on adding your soap to your brushes, uh, run a kettle of boiling water. Boiling water is going to be the key of getting uh, these brushes soft again. I don't mind letting them sit for a while with the soap in them. Uh, you'll notice I'm using some tea towels to set these on. These are old tea towels that I just used for art. Uh, I've learned over the years that sometimes I might go, well, there's no paint in that. I'm not gonna have any issues with it. And I tend to wrecking things that I like. So our kettle has just boiled. So I am now going to show you how we can start softening up these brushes. So now I have my kettle of boiling water. It's just come off of a boil. You wanna add it to a bowl that's heat proof, otherwise you're going to run into issues with your bowl cracking, which is something that you don't want to have happen. So now what I'm going to do is start by just swirling this in the hot water. And you'll notice that sometimes it's not going to want to really give, but if you keep swirling and you keep moving, and I as you add it to the water, you're going to find that it's going to start having a little bit of give. You want to try to get it so that they completely bend again. Uh, I would not do this right now. I'm actually burning my hands doing this. So uh, I maybe run it underneath cold water before testing them. But what you want is for it to be all the way down to where the metal and the brushes touch. You want that bendy. And so sometimes you might have to do this a couple times. So if you have brushes that are completely hard and you're finding they're not bending as you add them to the hot water, I would suggest doing it once we get a little bit of bend in it uh, put some more soap on it do it again get a little bit more bend into it and that's how you can get all of the paint out of your brush before you touch it unlike what I just did run it underneath some cold water <laughs> and now you should be able to touch the bristles and they should be completely bendy you should be able to bend them almost completely in half and that's when you know you've added enough in there and part of the reason I'm using the cold water is to make sure that's bendy and also just to get the rest of that soap out of there. And so when you have ones like this, this one already has a little bit of bend in it, but we're just gonna to try to get more bend in it. And so sometimes you can just go gently and you can kind of swirl it and then it's gonna start coming loose. But sometimes they really don't want to come loose. So at this point you have nothing to lose but to really go at your brush and really push it down and see what happens. Because sometimes you have to put a little bit of uh, effort into it to get these loose. And sometimes they go from side to side as well as along the flat side. So if you put a little bit of damage to your brushes doing this, at least you've saved it enough that you can work with it again. And uh, don't touch the brush. <laughs> don't touch the brush when it's hot because you're going to burn your hands. I don't know why I keep wanting to do that. I just do. And so this one has some bend, but it's still a little bit hard in here. I think I've had a lot of hard paint in there for a while. And so that's when maybe I would end up sitting in the water for a bit just to leave it. At this point, it's not great to leave them sitting in the water when it's hot, just because you could end up running into letting go of the glue that goes between the metal piece and the bristles. But at this point, 
you don't have a ton to lose doing this. Sometimes I look at it from the perspective of, I'm not gonna use the brush if it's completely hard. So if I end up losing a couple brushes because I'm being harder with them, trying to get the paint out, I don't consider it a huge loss. So while I do this, let's talk about what you can do to prevent your brushes from getting really, really hard. Uh, one thing that I would suggest is that when you go to clean them, make sure you only use cold water. It's kind of a counterintuitive thing because we're using hot boiling water to be able to get these soft again. But the thing with acrylic paints is that if you add acrylic paint to cold water, what ends up happening is it won't let the paint set up. Instead, it will clean it out from between the bristles and you're usually good. If you use warm or hot water, what that tends to do is set up the acrylic faster. So you're gonna run into more issues with it staying in the bristles and ruining your brush. And the other reason I would suggest always using cold water is for the sake of your pipes, because the same principle applies to your pipes. So if you're adding hot water or warm water every time you wash your acrylic paints, they're setting up in your pipes before it can actually go all the way down the drain. So over a long period of time, this might turn into a really big issue for you and you may have some issues with your pipes. I know professional artists that actually have a big bucket that they put all of their water in after they paint and they rinse out all of their water buckets in that pail. They actually let the water evaporate off, they scrape off the acrylic and they throw in the garbage. And I think if you're doing a ton of painting, that would be my suggestion, just to make sure that you are saving uh, your pipes, saving your brushes and not having long-term issues. So when I'm using things like matte medium or gel mediums, what I tend to do is put the brush in the water, swirl it around really, really well, just in my water bucket. And then what I would do is just leave it in it. I usually will have a bucket of water that's only a few inches thick, so only the bristles will sit in it and not the rest of the brush. And what I find is that if I put that aside and let it sit for an hour or so and then give it another clean and then clean it in the sink, I tend not to have as many issues with that gel sticking in the bristles and hardening up that brush. And so when you're looking for a brush, I would suggest a few things. One, don't go for bristles that are really, really long. This brush is always giving me more issues because the paint can go all the way through the brush and it's harder to knock them out. I prefer to use a brush that has much shorter bristles. A lot of mine have much shorter bristles just because I do find it a lot easier. I also find that depending on the brand, like these simple Simmons ones I've had for a long time, they're really cheap brushes, so sometimes I just end up getting them on sale, so I, I kind of take what I can get. But I also like brushes that are meant to be, that are a little bit better for wet mediums because what I find with them is they are a little bit softer, but at the same time, they don't tend to have the paint stick in them quite as much. So that's another thing to think about. And so I'll share with you some of my favorite brands of brushes, ones I find that work really, really well uh, for acrylic painting that won't give you as many issues. So you can find that in the description below. And just so you know, don't feel bad if your brushes do get clogged up with the paint. Sometimes no matter how careful you are, you run into issues with it. I do all the time. And I feel like I'm quite diligent about leaving it in the water for a little bit, cleaning them out well. And even sometimes if I'm not even sure that they're clean enough, I actually take some dish soap and I work it through the bristles when I'm cleaning the brushes. I don't do that all the time. I don't know if it's really great long-term for the brushes, but I look at it from the perspective of sometimes if I think it's gonna clog up the brush, I'll go overboard over just knowing that the brush is gonna clog up and I'm gonna have issues. So you'll notice that most of my brushes are in pretty good shape. They don't really have issues with them splaying out. This is probably the most splayed out brush that I have, and even then, this one isn't in really bad condition. What I would suggest is if you ever run into issues with uh, the tops getting frayed, the shape isn't great, uh, the other thing you can do to save your brush is just cut it on down. Uh, use some scissors, uh, just chop them along the top, get that nice clean edge back into it, and that helps. And the other nice thing about using the hot water is it does help those frayed edges of the brush kind of come back together again. So if you have a lot of frayed brushes, you may also wanna try this, even if they're not rock hard, you might find that it does help with trying to get the brush back into that nice, strong, uniform shape that you're looking for. So I hope this has given you an idea about how you can save your brushes and have them last a lot longer for your creative practice. There's nothing worse than having your favorite brush go hard. And I've had that happen more than enough times, but now that I know how to save them, it just goes a long way in just encouraging me towards having a really fun creative practice. 
And if you've enjoyed this video, if you can please like it. Every time you like a video, that just helps more people to see it and that just helps grow this channel. So as a small channel, just thank you so much for your support. And if you haven't subscribed yet, just please subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. So if you'd like to see a video about acrylic painting, click here. This is a video where I shared some of my favorite acrylic painting techniques and some of the things I wish I knew when I started acrylic painting. So I'll see you in the next video.